see. It says we're live. If you guys can hear us, let us know. I always feel like this thing is going to trick me into thinking that we're live and I'm going to start talking. And nobody will have heard what we said. So let us know if you can hear us. Okay. It says we're live. Cool. Cool. Working. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Hello, everyone who's here. Welcome to the August book live show for the Krusty Club. Today, we're going to be talking about Stranger Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and do some reminders for this month's book as well as next month's book. Um, in September this month, we are reading Ace of Spades, which is a YA thriller that follows two students at an elite private school who become the targets of a school bully named Aces, and then they have to work together to figure out who Aces is. If you love movies like Get Out or TV shows like Gossip Girl, you should definitely join us for this pick because we're gonna have the live show like mid to late October, so there's tons of time to read the book. In October, we're gonna be reading All's Well, which is a dazzling and darkly funny novel about a theater professor who believes that staging one of Shakespeare's like most famous plays is going to heal her of her chronic pain, but at what cost? That's basically what the entire book is focusing on. I've heard the book is super weird and I really like weird books. So if you love those, join us next month to read that. And if you also wanna know what we're reading for the rest of the year, I've posted all of that on the book club Instagram, which is linked down below. So you can go ahead and check that out so you can see what we're reading in November and December. Now that I've kind of given you a little bit of a reminder, I'm gonna go ahead and let all the co-hosts introduce themselves. And then while they're introducing themselves, they're also going to share a recent favorite book of any genre. So you guys can kind of get a feel of their favorites. And if you've read the book, go ahead and leave a, let's see, a blue heart in the comments if you finish the book while everyone introduces themselves. <laughs> Hi, my name's Celine. I recently loved Robber Girl by S.T. Gibson. She also wrote A Dowry of Blood and I really like that one as well. Um, I also gave Strange the Dreamer five stars. It was my third reread for it, so I was just vibing. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Monet from the channel Life is Monet. A recent favorite, The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina was the last like favorite book that I've read. Um, and I gave Strange the Dreamer five stars all three times that I read it. Uh, I'm Reagan. I am currently reading Any Way the Wind Blows by Rainbow Rowell. And I'm living for it. Um, I guess my last red book that I really enjoyed was Ace of Spades. So I'm excited for next month. Um, I DNF Strange <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to take off my audio to laugh. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess one of my recent favorites is actually one I just read with Monet and it was called The 22 Murders of Madison May. I really love that book. It's like a sci-fi soft thriller. It's not really like very heavy on the thriller, but it's like super heavy on the sci-fi and I loved it so much. I was super shocked because I went into it thinking it was going to be trash like the rest of the books we had just read. <laughs> you know what, I, and then I get that, I, get the, I think I gave The 22 Murders of Madison May four and a half stars. Yeah. It's actually a really fun, it's thriller in a sense of like, you get short mm -hmm. bursts of like adrenaline, yeah. um, exciting moments in the book. Definitely, mm -hmm. if you see it, pick it up. Yeah. And I also DNF to Strange the Dreamer. <laughs> so we have two DNFs in today's live show and two five stars. So everybody is in that spectrum. <laughs> Whatever you did, you are represented. <laughs> this isn't even a spectrum. That's just the binary. <laughs> well, people are going to be in there somewhere. <laughs> 
I see a lot of blue hearts. Me and Reagan can't relate, but I do love this for you. Oh, I do goodness. love this for you. Hi, Sabrina. Oh my gosh. Sabrina's literally just here because we DNF'd. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Okay, cool. So we are going to basically be talking about any and everything because <laughs> My questions flew out the window once I realized that this book wasn't going to be what I thought it would be. So initial thoughts. Let's talk about those. We already know that Monet and Sal gave it five stars. So do you guys want to share like your initial feelings when you first read Stranger Dreamer? And then now with like a reread, what your feelings were when you started the book? Um, I want to say, if I remember correctly, my first... Uh, Initial thoughts about the book was that I really was angry with Laszlo for not grabbing a hold of, I guess, his what was what I felt like was his destiny. Um, and I remember at like one point in the book where I was just like, he's really not gonna speak up, and like you know he is. That's the entire point of the story. Uh, it's even in the synopsis that he gets a chance, but it's such a slow burn romance that as you're reading it, you're like, are you really about to let this chance slip out of your hands? But upon the reread. I was very nostalgic because where you see Laszlo in the very beginning and where he ends in the book and where he ends in the entire duology is such a drastic change that like seeing Laszlo as like this weak, mousy character once again was just like, oh, you're going to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I remember not much from my first read. I just know that I really liked it. And like, I was screaming at Monet about it the whole time I was reading it. And I think we have very like different opinions on Minya. I was like, I just want her to take care of me. And you were like, that bitch terrifies me. And I was like, <laughs> Minya is my all time favorite villain from any book that I've ever read. The only other villain that kind of love as much as her is Anakin. Um, but I like, in terms of like villains, Minya is the villain of all villains for me. Yeah. Oh wow. Reagan, do you want to share what your There's thoughts were? Romance and a villain in here? Like I read like a hundred pages. <laughs> like, where does that happen? Minya is a villain. A, villain. a real villain. A morally gray villain. I read 25 chapters and the fact that Monet just said a villain and I went. <laughs> I don't know who y'all are talking about. I was like, who's Minya? Oh, man. Not who's Minya? I literally have no idea who that is. Um, okay, I, I guess it's, it wouldn't be, the, uh, it would be a spoiler for you guys because you did enough, but for those who read the book, uh, from the traumatic experience, everybody grows up except Minya and like her hatred and her rage prevents her from literally maturing. So like, she's still living the day that the like that it happened and so she's literally holding on to the same energy like for her it just happened five minutes ago and she wants her rematch she's literally like it was 10 years ago and minya's like nah that happened yesterday i want my rematch so yeah she's <laughs> definitely a villain same book like oh, no honestly because well, i also the dream when, <laughs> when i was reading this book i studied it out and i was like okay like the first two chapters I was like, this is going to be interesting. Let's see. Like, honestly, I was so, this is the one time I entered a book and I was so, like, I had a positive mindset. I was ready. I made tea. I made tea to read this book. I was like, I am ready. I'm going to sit down and take my time because this is a long audio book because I don't have my physical copy with me. And so I was like, this is a long audio book. I don't really want to try the ebook right now. So I sat down. I was like, let me sip my tea. I said, okay, the first chapter is going well. The second chapter is okay. <laughs> and then I got to the third chapter. And I was like, what happened? Nothing. Like, okay, it's only three chapters, but like, it it's was so in the stage of like slow. And then I was like, I have no clue who anybody but Laszlo is. <laughs> So and that's because he's the book. I feel like if you don't like books that take their time to make their point, mm -hmm. 
then it's not a book that you're gonna like because like this duology mm -hmm. literally takes the full two books to like weave its story I, I think it's important that you are a character-based reader because most mm -hmm. of this book is the is dependent upon the reader's emotions so it's it's a slow burn for the romance. It's a slow pace for the plot because you have to get to a point where like you become invested in the characters because when they start doing wild stuff, that's when you really start screaming because you're like you're acting different now. What are you doing? Um, but also like, I think what makes Minion one of my favorite villains is that you see her and like what makes her angry. So when she becomes a pivotal point in like the story and in the duology. She's a mountain that won't move. And you know that she won't move because you've seen her this entire story. And you're like, I don't know how y'all gonna defeat Minya because Minya will, she's not able to be negotiated with. Mm -hmm. So I think like you having these villains and you knowing that they can't be convinced, they can't be negotiated with, they, they won't compromise. That also makes the book more hard hitting because I haven't read where like, you get to know a villain to that point where you're like, yeah, actually she's solid on her conviction. She's gonna die on the hill. Good luck, y'all. <laughs> I love character driven stories. <laughs> I I was like, I I big in Spain. Did you listen to the audio too or did you read? No, I was just reading. Hmm. But Minya, that's the one who <laughs> can control the ghosts. Mm -hmm. Got mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I just remembered what while you were talking, I was like, I think that's the one person that's like on Sarai's side that's not very nice, <laughs> right? So yeah. I was like, I not think, very like, nice one. I liked her because I was like, she feels like somebody who's really just gonna go off the rails at any moment. So I was like, mm, interesting. Can't remember your name. Interesting, but now I do. But I think, yeah, because I tend to be more of a plot person, like if I'm reading a book, it's very rare that I'll like a book solely on just characters. Because when I started this book, I remember people literally being like, Stranger Dreamer is so romantic, like seeing all the quotes and stuff. Like, and then I entered the book and I was like, I'm already on chapter 25. I think that's how you are because, like, if you think about it, or like, literally, Trains of Dreamer doesn't have a plot. The yeah. whole thing that he's supposed to be going to wheat, but you don't know what's supposed to happen when he gets to yeah. wheat, and you're just like following him as he's in wheat. And like, there's certain things that are occurring, but like, the characters are so far from each other, they're not. Your main characters are not interacting with each other, so you're sitting yeah. there the whole time, like, what is the plot of this movie? I don't think it has one. Like, the duology as a whole is stronger than the individual parts. Mm. So. No, I love character-driven books. I just, I don't know. I was so confused when we got to like Minya and all of them, cause I was like, <laughs> I was just getting used to Laszlo. <laughs> and then these yeah. people came out of nowhere and I was like, who are you? Oh right. yeah, she's in the second book too, so don't even bother. You know, new, new character. She opens up the first half of the book is new characters, and because of where the first book ends, I remember being angry because I'm like, stuff mm -hmm. just popped off in Strange the Dreamer, and now we're here from you, the nightmares. I do not care about Cora and Nova and this sisterhood they got going on. Can you get that? So yeah, that actually does happen in the second book a lot. You have to get to know new characters. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like a good a good ending for me because when I entered the second part and it was like Sarai's part, I was like five people. <laughs> like I barely I was like I barely started like Lazo was already boring me. Like and now you're adding five more boring people. I don't think I can do this, Your Honor. <laughs> So, mm, but that is interesting. We are going to really get into spoilers. So you guys will have a chance to say everything that you wanted to say about spoilers. Because when it was like, this is a spoiler. But I actually want to know all the spoilers. I just don't want to read it. So let's look quickly at what other people said. <laughs> so I see someone say they gave it a two star. I know that Sabrina didn't enjoy the book when she read it. Um, let's see. I feel like most people are here for the tea and the polarizing opinions. <laughs> so, 
let's if I okay. know what happens I might be more inclined to finish yeah <laughs> yeah because I was just gonna ask Reagan because I know you guys enjoyed a lot but I want to ask Reagan is there anything based off of what you read that you enjoyed in the book <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just going to be honest, for most of the time, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, Minya does need to be protected, but also I don't want to live in a world where Minya is this. <laughs> <laughs> there, um, there were like some funny lines that made me laugh. <laughs> I will say, even though it's like a five star read for me, when they have their first kiss, I'm like, I can't be here. I'm not straight enough for this. Not that. <laughs> um, who is doing this kissing? Who? What is the romance? Laszlo okay. and Sarai. And Sarai. Have you not seen like all the billions of fan art? Okay, here's the thing. Guys, I'm just going to be really honest. I was very excited to read this book because of the fan art. I was like, it's giving. A lot of the fan art of the series was giving. So it's like, I'm ready to enjoy this book. And so when I got into it and I was like, where is the room? Because, okay, Lazo just feels like such a boring character to me. Like, and Sarai just seems like an interesting person. Like her character focus is interesting and Lazo's is so boring that I'm like, if I read this book and I get to the end of the book and it ends up being a really interesting girl with some really boring guy, I'm going to be in so much pain. Oh no, Lazlo gets interesting. And like, it's all, it all makes sense in the last few chapters of Strange the Dreamer. Like yeah. literally the very end. Yeah. Literally the very end. Like if this is, this is a prequel, prequel to the whole story, to the whole duology. Like yeah. everything happens in the next book. Like at the very end of this one, you understand why you were here, why you met all these characters, why they were doing these things. And then in the second book, it's nothing but action, 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 action. That's why I'm telling you like Me the Nightmares is objectively the better book. It is a better book. Yeah. <laughs> it's giving the vibes that Black Sun gave when after you read it, you're like, so this is where the story begins. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. I'm open to finishing it because the first time I read The Raven Boys, I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now, like, I love The Raven Boys. <laughs> yeah. Like, I so know that this sometimes is the mm -hmm. first read is not, like. Ooh. Sometimes you have to know where it's going before you can enjoy it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think that knowing nothing's gonna happen makes you like, okay, you know, I'm not expecting anything. Cause I think if you're, when you first read a book, you're looking for stuff, you're actively waiting for things to happen. I think knowing yeah. that, like, yeah, it's not gonna happen to the end, just enjoy the ride, just sit down, eat your food. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't yeah. do too much. No, but I had never seen any fan art. I didn't know what the book was about at all. I, I, <laughs> Yeah. I saw a fan art that was spoilery and I sent it to Monet and I was like, does this mean what I think it means? And she left me on read. And so I just like rushed to the end. <laughs> no, she, Monet does do that. You'll ask her a question and then all you see is your message not being responded to. <laughs> Are you like, is this confirmation? What is I this? Don't because, to ruin like, it. Reagan, you bring up such a good point about the Raven Boys because when I, I have only read the Raven Boys once. But I remember the first like 150 pages. Oh my God, I was like, I'm ready to pull out my hair. This is so slow and boring. And then you get to the end of the book and you're like, okay, kind of like it. And then you're like, let me read the second book. So maybe it's like that. But let's um, see. To answer the question from everything. Oh, oh this one? Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, like the, the whole duology depends on your understanding of the characters because in the second book, you have all these different villains that are non-compromising and non-negotiable. And I think it helps to understand why they're so tenacious and like overzealous. Because like, for example, Minya won't grow up. So when you get to see her in like her true villainous point, 
she literally acts like a child. She is still six years old, but she's six years old and full of rage. So I think it's helpful to understand that like she throws tantrums and she's childish and she's petty. So I, I do think that it's required to like understand the backstory from the prequel so that you can understand when you get like to where stuff starts happening. When you know that like these are all mountains that won't move, but something has to shake. Yeah, One yeah, these, like, expectations <laughs> of mm -hmm. the characters going into book two that kind of get flipped on their head. Mm -hmm. And Lainey Taylor really likes doing that. In, That's like, not a good sign for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. It's a torturous experience. That's why I love it. I love being tortured. A couple of days? Yeah. When he gets to <laughs> meet... It's, it's, <laughs> it's like 300 pages, but... So many couple days. A couple yeah, of like, days. The, the journey to Weep is a long time, but then once Laszlo's there, it's fucking days. I mean, it's days. No. <laughs> Not you said, be free. <laughs> be free. <laughs> Wait. I cannot conceptualize that. <laughs> In terms of like, I don't know if you guys ever have like taken a mythology class or like when they write uh, like epic story stories, there's always like character arcs where like one is like the long journey home, one is like the lost one, the chosen hero. Um, this one definitely follows like an odyssey type storyline or like plot pace because the journey is the longest part of the book. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't the Odyssey like over seven? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so long. Then his journey home is like so long. Yeah, yeah. No, literally, I am baffled. I'm like, are you sure it's not years? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so good to, lunch, right, to get across the uh, I don't, I don't remember what it's called, but so it took them a few months to get to weep, right? Because yeah, they had to pick up more. Six months. Yeah, they had to pick up more people. They were yeah. like recruiting. Okay, okay see, listen. this is also what I thought about Stranger Dreamer. I thought it was like a super quick YA fantasy. And when we were talking about the romance, I was like, okay, it's gonna be quick and cute. It's gonna give like an enchantment of ravens. No. We're gonna get there and they're gonna be in love and then we're gonna keep moving. So I was like, Your yeah, expectation is just wrong. You have wrong expectations. <laughs> enchantment of ravens is romance with no plot. Mm. Range the dreamer is no plot, little romance. So what are y'all there for? The writing. Yeah, the writing. The experience. It can't, I don't think it's the writing. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. The writing is kind of pretentious and like melodramatic, but I, I like that. <laughs> I, I listen, mm. I need the melodrama. Because he described her as like honey, right? He was like, she's she's like honey dripping in something. And I was just like, oh, I'm so here for it. Describe me. Not the black sun again. <laughs> we can't escape honey in books. He's like describing her lips and he's like, wow, it's like the most beautiful succulent apple. And I'm just like, does nobody use agave? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's always honey. I think we should. <laughs> there are several other sweetening, you know. I so know so many reading. like books that like do this. Like for example, like the Farsia trilogy, uh, mm. Assassin's Apprentice. Like nothing mm. happens in that book. It's like as slow as like your traditional. I also DNF that book. And that tracks. If you <laughs> if you did not like fit, <laughs> you're not going to like Laszlo. Like that tracks. Right? I also read Strange the Dreamer after Monet said that it was similar to the Starless Sea. So I had that kind of expectation going into Did it. Did I not just buy that? Oh, you're yeah. not going to like the plot in the Starless Sea. There ain't nothing like in there. Nothing. Don't read it. There's no is plot. Is there some hope for me? Like, is it kind of like Adi LaRue as well? Nope. nope. No. In, in, the, in the book, like, it's, you know how, like, you hate how... Lavo describes her as like dripping and honey and a succulent flower. No, wait, I don't hate it. I just think like, you know that that phrase that people always talk about, the I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. That's what honey reminds me of. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I like, think I mean, Miss Sarah J. Mass. That's the only one who does that. Like, oh, really? I feel like I read it so 
Not agave lips. <laughs> Maple syrup. No, but that's guys. We have ma- see maple syrup. <laughs> I think some Canadian authors could utilize this one. Oh, no. I <laughs> know. Uh, I reject that. I rebuke <laughs> that in the name of Canada. <laughs> um, there are some similarities. Like, both are orphans. Both are very much boring. Both uh, have stuff kind of happen to them. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, kind of reactionary people mm-hmm. instead of actionary. Um, right. So, yeah, a lot of the character traits. Huh? That's the same with Starless C. That's like one of the main criticisms I see with Starless that like Zachary Ezra Rollins doesn't do enough on his own. He's just reacting to everything. Yeah, Fitz, Zachary Ezra Rollins, Laszlo. Yeah, they're like reactionary characters. Guys, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. (laughs) I'm getting nervous. I loved Fitz but hated Laszlo. He was just that face. I don't know what that phase is called, guys. And if Lavo turns out to be, like, epic, Fitz is only ever just a crappy assassin. I mean, he's the worst assassin there ever was. I don't even know why it's called Assassin's Apprentice. I don't know, Monet. Isn't one of your favorite authors having a similar, a similar series with an assassin? <laughs> That's not really an assassin. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm talking to this comment about Fitz. couldn't kill him, but yet well, said, don't come for my bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it is like every YA book does the whole like I held a breath, I let out a breath I didn't know I was holding. Oh my god, Laza reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Delphi, weren't we just talking about this before I came I here? <laughs> the same the, the first man I kissed, I definitely threw up after. That should have been a sign. I I'm a, I'm gonna say something I can't say on live, but I'm gonna put it in the chat. Remind me to tell you about my first kiss. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> RC says worse than Selena. Is that how you I actually DNF through on a glass. That was terrible. That oh, was wow. That's crazy. I've heard that that series is something. It's something. It's the first Hello. one she wrote. Okay. Did you read it? Throne of Glass. Yeah, have you read it? Yeah, I read it. I didn't finish the, <laughs> the series. I read Throne of Glass. I made it all the way through. What happened? I don't. <laughs> I tried. I think I made it to the second book. And when she changed her name for the third time, I just gave up. Because what I'm reading all these books for, you finna be somebody new in every book. You can't keep changing your name. You texted me and you're like, can you just tell me the ending? I need to know if I need to finish this. And so I did, and you're like, I'm done. Yeah. I know that I needed my characters to have the same name, or at least I can allot for one name change. That's, <laughs> That's what you told me. <laughs> That's it. I draw the line. You're like, oh, is yeah, this the I never hear anything good about. about Throne of Glass from people who aren't like massive stands of everything that she writes. I feel like most people criticize that series the most. I've, I started Akatar. Okay, Per. How's it going? Favorite, favorite keeps the same name. So you got that going. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's kind of hard. Well, it was hard for me to get spoiled for Throne of Glass because the main character changes her name more than once. <coughs> I would hear people talking about a character, and I'm like, I'm in the second book. I don't know who y'all talking about. That must be a big character that comes later. To find out that my character and the character you talk about is the same person, and they're going to change their name again? No. <laughs> That's malarkey. <laughs> Not Sabrina saying that series gets so good. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Throne of Glass peaked for me when it introduced Ansel, and I thought things were gonna get sapphic, and it didn't. With the ginger? <laughs> okay, so what? This is for mainly Monet, and when she comes back, and then also Cell. What are your favorite guys? We're obviously in spoilers, just in case anyone's still here that hasn't finished. 
Um, but what were your favorite scenes from Strange the Dreamer? The prologue. Really? But it sets up the whole, the whole no. ending. Just reread the prologue and you'll know how the book ends. Oh. oh. So this <laughs> blue girl is the... the oh! Wait, because Monet texted me about that happening, and that's when I was like, I'm DNF. <laughs> the blue oh. girl that falls from the citadel in the end, you get her her character reveal. Mm. I'll wait till the blue girl is mm, that's interesting. Well, it, would no, I decided- spoiler. <laughs> it wouldn't be a spoiler if you guys had read the book. Okay, well, we did it because we hated it. <laughs> Wait, but isn't the one girl blue? The one y'all say he Reagan, you're so friend? close. Yeah. You're so close. The <laughs> wise yeah. going to die and Minya the villain is gonna catch her her ghost. He's she's gonna be in control of her. <gasps> That's how the book ends. Wait, Wait, I thought they were already dead. They were supposed to be dead. Like the town thought they were dead. I they think survived, they right? Dead. Yeah, they survived the slaughtering, but they weren't supposed to. <laughs> yeah, I think Reagan. So I think they were. There was like a <laughs> mass slaughtering that happened, and then the five of them were the yeah, ones that survived. <laughs> I thought they were ghosts. No, <laughs> Men, <laughs> are, some are mentally controlled ghosts. <laughs> In the center, there are actual ghosts, but not the kids. The kids are alive. Everyone else is ghosts. You know what? I could see why you would think that because. There was a scene where, like, Minya was talk. They were like talking about some ghosts or something. Like, the ghost shouldn't see you, or something. She didn't know that you're alive or something. And do you know what I'm talking about? Like earlier on, when they were like, the ghost shouldn't know that you're actually alive because you're supposed to be dead. That's the part when I knew they were alive. Listen, because I thought they were like, oh yeah, the romance is between Laszlo and her. I was like, oh, okay, you like Chris is a ghost. I'm glad I didn't say that out loud. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay. Okay. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you know somebody's gonna fall. You know, some blue girl is gonna fall from a really big building, and you just gonna read, read that again. You're like, I wonder who it is. And you don't expect the author to make the main love interest the girl who falls off the building. So you don't really care. You're just like, oh, somebody's going to fall. It's going to be like her sister or Mindy yeah. or Ruby or something. But then you get to the end, you're like, oh, no, she really she really killed her main character. That's crazy. <laughs> That's you wild. You know what? Some authors have done it. I won't name which ones, but one of my one of my favorite authors did that. Not Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said something that would have made no sense. So, yes, Monet, your favorite scene from the book? From Strange the Dreamer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the end where uh, Minya faces off with Laszlo. Okay. Yeah. Like a giant <laughs> fight? When you find out who Laszlo is, you find out that him and Minya are related. And Laszlo is powerful, but Minya controls the spirit of his love interest. And Minya is like, yeah, what's up? So it's like this moment where like Laszlo has been such a good guy. He's been such a good guy with like such a good heart. And like Minya is about to test it. She's about to put him through the fire. He's going to be a villain or what? I don't know. Because he's not going to hurt a child. But in a lot of ways, even though Minya is physically a child, she's not a child. So it's like he's stuck between Wait, like... Wait, Minya is physically a child? She's not <laughs> actually... <laughs> yeah, she has the body of a six-year-old. She has like grown body of a six-year-old Because the, when they slayed all the gods, she was six. So she, oh her six-year-old God. self, she saved the baby. So she's actually older than Sarai and Ruby and Pharaoh. She's the oldest. That's why she saved them. Not this. She literally take like she doesn't yeah. grow because <laughs> she's holding on to all of these ghosts, and all these ghosts know is anger because they're enslaved again. 
by the people who they thought they were finally free from. No, literally, Sabrina, we're like, okay, no, so we're free. Free. <laughs> right? <laughs> the gods used to use humans. Uh -huh. like, they would take them for one year of their life up to the citadel, and when they sent them back, they would erase their memory. Uh -huh. So they would be up there, they would your body would go through changes. You knew that you were like being used for sex and you probably had babies or whatever like that. And they only ever took women. And so they used the women to produce God spawn, like half mm -hmm. human, half God babies. But Aerophane was the first guy they ever took. And so Aerophane mm -hmm. slayed all the guys and he killed babies. But Minya could hear the slaughter. So her six-year-old self grabbed as many babies as she could, which is the other God spawn that you know, and she hides. So when Aerophane comes to slay the kids, he knows that one baby in there is his child, which is Sarai, but he doesn't know which is his. So he thinks that he kills her. So the people in the town, the only thing that's still supposed to be left over from the guys is the Citadel. They don't think, they think the Citadel is empty. So it's kind of like this building that's haunting them. And so imagine dying and you actually, your afterlife is in the Citadel with guys that are not supposed to be there. You're, you're slaves to the guys that you thought you slaughtered. That's what the- that's what this happened. book? Yes. Yes. Plus the romance. Plus the romance. And so each right. guy has an ability. Minya's ability is that if you're dead, she can control your ghost. Sarai spits out moss, and when she oh, touches you, she can enter your dream. So that's how she meets Laszlo, because she knows Aerophane is up to something when he brings in this cavalry, and so she's going into their dreams to figure out why they're in weak, and so she touches Laszlo, and you're not supposed to see her, but Laszlo can. Lazo is the only one who can see Sarai. No one else can. And there's a reason. Okay. It's giving Twilight, <laughs> but the opposite way. <laughs> Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah. So, like, Minya, because of she's six years old, she's watching everyone she loves get slaughtered, and she's saving these kids. She's so angry and upset that, like, and also her power is being used in so many different aspects because she's controlling hundreds and thousands of ghosts at one time. So it's concentrated effort. So she's not growing up. And in her you dreams- mean, I said this before you came here. <laughs> I said this, I said Monet's gonna talk and we're all gonna listen because she will be amazing. No, but literally, okay. Yeah. Okay, so- Aer Aerophane. Aerophane, I almost- <laughs> Aerophane is Sarai's parent? Yes. But then how are Minya and Laszlo connected? Is He's not blue. Who the is Aerophane? Aerophane is, is a god, god right? Who brings Laszlo into weep. He's the guy that... So, like, again, they think that they got rid of the gods, and there's just this building hovering over them. Mm -hmm. And Aerophane is the hero, but he can't heal. You know, everybody looks at him as like a hero because he saved yeah. them from the guys. But for him, he slaughtered these babies, one of which was his daughter, and every day he has to look up for this building. So he travels the world looking for people, scientists, alchemists, whoever, like uh, people who create bombs to get rid of the building. Oh. So he is the one who went to Laszlo's town and was yes. like, I'm going to all these people. And they weren't going to pick Laszlo, but then he picked him. Yes. Got it. They're all coming to weep to get rid of this building that's haunting them. Oh. The and eventually, Laszlo is like touching some parts of the metal that are attached to the citadel, and he notices that he starts changing color. But he thinks everybody has that reaction to it, and it's not until Thyron, Thy Thyron, Thyron Nero, yeah, him. Mm -hmm. It's not until he realizes through like chemical experiment experiments that Laszlo is different and then they're like going to go figure this out and see what Laszlo can really do and shit literally blows up. Wait, and so I Laszlo changes colors. Yeah, the metal, the, the Citadel is made of um, a Mazarthium metal and that's what's making oh. it. So because oh. Laszlo is not touching the metal and he's away from it, he looks the same color as everyone else. It's only when he touches the metal that he starts to turn blue. But when he was a baby, when they first found him, everyone thought he was super sick because he was like gray. Remember in the in the first chapter, the monk was saying that you were so gray, we thought you were Yeah, they thought he would die, yeah. He hadn't been touching the metals for so long, he was turning from blue to gray to white. I'm not gonna lie, this is making me want to go back and read the book. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I need to start over. <laughs> this is not- You know, this is not. a whole book for you guys, and you're like, you know what? No, because, okay, no, because I literally looked up the fan art 
And it's giving. Yeah, see how you said her? I saw that. I sent to Monet and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, she spoiled it. I might have to go. I might have to go back and read this book. But also, like, I was gonna say airplane. <laughs> Errol, E R I L, fame. Errol. Okay. <laughs> um. So there's the God spawns all have powers, right? And the person who used to control the the citadel, what was his name? The the biggest god. Scathos. 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 Minya is his daughter. And so, like, if she inherited his power, she could have freed them from the Citadel. So she's oh. always been resentful that the power that she got from her father wasn't the one she needed. Mm -hmm. Oslo is the descendant of Scathis, who does have control over the Mazarthium. So he can let them in or out, but Minya controls the love of his life. So when they face off, she's like, you're going to free me or I'm going to let Sarai go. And he's like, I'm not going to free you. And you're, you're not going to let Sarai go. So, like, they're going to face off as brother and sister, hero and villain, God versus God. <laughs> not sibling rival. Okay. I think people need to describe Stranger Dreamer with some slight spoilers in there. Because <laughs> if I had heard sibling rivalry and not the romance that's barely there when I started out the book. F that romance, okay? That romance is a side well, plot. <laughs> you know that we've openly talked about not trusting the general public's opinions when it comes to books. <laughs> Why would Literally. Because, I mean, like, sibling rivalry, powers, it ghosts, I love has no romance. If I gave it five stars, don't expect the romance. Okay? I just feel like I should have heard ghosts and sibling rivalry. And I would have been like, who's the siblings? We're solving a mystery. Stranger Dreamer is fantasy mystery. Now it is. <laughs> Let's figure out who's done it. Like, yeah. Like, you're making this look so good. Yeah, I'm like, okay. I gotta go back and pick... Right, guys, literally... <laughs> literally because why is the book so boring it is boring that i'm like, not gonna it's, lie. Boring. It's, slow. it's so slow that's like the one flaw like i feel like they need to, okay I no offense like any lady taylor stands in here but i feel like lady taylor should maybe have given this book <laughs> to maybe v.e schwab i'll even say sarah j bass <laughs> like V. Schwab. I wish I could meet uh, you. V. Schwab. Meet you. Put her in the <laughs> waiting room. I'm in the lobby. When, we next, when next time we get on Zoom, I'm putting Chanel in the lobby. That's illegal. I'm sorry. I just said V. Schwab because I love V. E. Schwab. V. E. Would have been this but then you see with a Mary J. Mass. <laughs> okay, Sarah J. Mass at least would have given us actual romance. It would have been smut. Romance. Is it would have been horrible. I feel like it Sarah J. Mass's horrible. idea of romance is not. My I do not idea enjoy of Sarah J. Mass's books, and I hate her love interest. From what I have read. But at least if she said, if somebody, if she had written that and somebody said there's romance in here, there would have been romance because people are saying this book has romance, but where, if you enter this book thinking you're looking for romance, it's not going to be there. But if somebody says something like that about certain authors, you know, there's going to be a romance, but I think the best author for this book, no offense to Miss Laney Taylor, I love that you wrote this and the people <laughs> love that you wrote this, but V.E. Schwab would have ate this for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. That's okay, I'm, I'm also saying. a fan of B.E. And Reagan Schwab. agrees. I'm Period. a fan of B.E. Schwab. But I feel like I Sarah J. Mass, her love interest, her main ca male characters always Trash. have a flaw, and they're always somehow problematic. Trash. So, like, yep. Lonzo's literally perfect. So don't yep. give him to Sarah J. Mass, because she well, would be I'm only I only said Sarah J. Mass based off of the romance promise alone. I didn't say it was gonna be good romance. I didn't say we were gonna like anybody, but V. E. Schwab would have given us the perfect blend of war, romance, and something that would break your heart because that ending is a V. E. Schwab ending. That but ending is not her smoking bone. Lainey Taylor does tragedy in all her books. All her books. Listen, yeah, but she also was, writes boring books based off of this book. If her books are like Strange to Dreamer, I will be bored. <laughs> so. I was gonna say like. <laughs> Daughter of Smoke and Bone is actually another prequel. Nothing happens in that book. Either. I mean, I didn't mind Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but 
I am. I guess I'm still <laughs> reading the second one. Okay, so I think I literally just long? can't do the second one. I can't get into <laughs> it. I'm, I don't. I can't. Like I, everybody knows how much I hate that Akamath book. I can't stand it. So I'm not the person who's going to be like, Sarah G. Mass is the best author we've seen because that's a lie. So let's just hand it over. Let's put it in the Schwab files. Not Cassie Clear. I'm um, in the lobby too. I, yeah, I'm yeah, right. Right. I was thinking the Marcy. same thing, RC. I was thinking the same. That's a little too far. So I'm going to pretend I didn't read that. That's Y'all are trying to take this beautiful book that she wrote and put it in the hands of someone else. Monet. Miss Claire would not it as well. Here's but. the thing. Monet, I understand that the book is so deep and so filled with <laughs> beautiful quotes. I will even say tattooable quotes, maybe. I understand that the people love this book. But when I'm reading, I'm trying to not be bored. So... <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to do... Cause like I teach English and um, one day I was supposed to book talk what I was reading. <laughs> I, was like, I can't do it y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm reading this, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, because it doesn't promote because, reading. <laughs> because I was talking about this book to Monet and Sal and they were like, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I was like, yeah, Lucy's care. They said it was <laughs> I knew Chanel was lost when I said, Chanel, where are you in the book? She said, log on with the people and they're about to go to the place. <laughs> we? <laughs> yes. You mean we? <laughs> what do you mean the place? I'm at that same part. <laughs> I was like, Monet was like, so yeah, what's happening right here? And I was like, what's happening? You tell me. <laughs> Like, here's the thing, exactly. Like, even if a book is beautifully written, if I feel nothing, and if the book is, like, boring, <laughs> not to <your> cheek. <laughs> not to cheek. I really hate it here. That book would have taken place in a small coastal town in the 1940s. <laughs> so let's not do that. Okay, this is interesting. I enjoyed the book a lot, but OMG, the pacing is unbearable. What did you guys think about the pacing, the people who love the book? Okay, they that's what I'm saying. I agree. Like, and I think Mew the Nightmares, I had to keep putting it down because I was so mm -hmm. used to the pace from Strange the Dreamer that when we got to Mew the Nightmares and she hit the gas full force, I was like, "Did she? is this the same author? Why are we taking off like this? <laughs> See, I think... I am the type of person that generally likes the first book more just because mm -hmm. I like the slower pace and getting to know everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I, I didn't have a problem with this book. I like the ending that it left me with because I wanted mm -hmm. more. I didn't feel dissatisfied with like my time spent listening to it or reading it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I didn't have I an issue with that for you i love that so much getting to know people is so amazing i didn't love the night circus <laughs> and i know that's that doesn't track because i love strange to dream and i love the starless sea and the night circus would just make sense right but mm -hmm. math wasn't mathing when i read it yeah the night circus i read that book too and i felt like i don't want to hear you guys talking <laughs> <laughs> no what we'll hear hold on Strange to Dreamer and the Night Circus are a perfect example, in my opinion, of books that would have been phenomenal, that would be phenomenal, like, on TV, like, as a movie or as some sort of, like, adaptation, whatever. However, the Night Circus <laughs> is another book where, as I was reading it, I was like, there's a lot going on here, but at the same time, there's nothing happening, <laughs> and I'm confused. Because there was like one character, what was his name? Gabriel or something? Is that his name? I can't remember his name. But that one character that was like a side character that did like everything. You mean Bailey? Like, yeah, there we go. Bailey. <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> no. You don't need to read no more fantasy. 
Just um, give it I up. I the night took us like two years ago. So. And you still ain't like, getting it right after yeah. two years of practice. Um, because that's where my point is going. Like the book was very boring. That when I finished it, I was like, one character here mattered. And it wasn't the two people that and you didn't say. even remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, he obviously didn't matter enough. But the only reason I knew it was Bailey is because we've had this exact conversation before, just on Zoom. Yeah, we have. Except I forgot the name. So, but I do think the Ninth Circus is better than this because there were at least some points that I was like, "Oh, this is cute." But also, I finished the Ninth Circus when I didn't finish this. So. Let's all breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so clearly, from some of us, the answer to this question is yes. But would you read from this author again? And also, since it's probably yes for everyone, except probably me, um, what themes do you enjoy in fantasy books? Okay, I've read Daughter of Smoke and Bone. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it's probably a yes for everyone. Well, like the second one has me kind of over Lainey Taylor. Like <laughs> the second, I can't get through the second one, and I couldn't get through this, and I'm like Miss Taylor. Oh, that's right. It's the same world. Like Laszlo and Karu exist in the same multiverse. So, oh, really? Yeah. It's the same world. Yeah. What? Oh it's God! Like, <laughs> it's like you're doing all these little tricks of information to y'all. Yeah, I I love Lily Taylor. I really like what she did. And while like I didn't absolutely love um a daughter of Smoke and Bone like the series, mm -hmm. I think that was because I listened to the audiobook and the narrator. <laughs> Bad. So oh, I'm gonna I try am listening to audio. Yeah, so that might be it. Dreams a Dreamer, Daughter of Smoke and Bone is the same okay. multiverse, and she's writing another book in the same multiverse. So I will read everything she publishes now that I've caught up to what she I has. I will her grocery list. Yeah. Reagan. <laughs> I will sweep through her dumpster behind her apartment building to get the trash that she threw away. Because I want to read that too. No, that. I literally signed up to her Patreon for a few months just so I could get like some extra stories. Because Lainey Taylor takes like years to write her books like 10 yeah. eight years to write each series so like look how long it's been since Stranger Dreamer came out and she's been working on this book ever since and we still have no information on it it's like Aaron Morgenstern where they literally take almost a decade to write it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I really love this I'm gonna use this a court of moths and petty children <laughs> Laszlo, you know what? Like, it, remember in the second book, Cell, where like at first, when Minya again, she's non negotiable. So I'm like, y'all just gonna have to kill her. Like, y'all just gotta kill her. But then she's holding on to Sarai's soul. So, like, if she dies, Sarai's dies. So, like, she, Lainey Taylor literally said that she wanted a villain where you couldn't defeat them with murder. So she purposely wrote them into a corner. Um, and then you, they kind of like, put her out of the plot for a little bit. And so when she comes back, I was actually excited to see her because we have so many other villains that like when we got back to Minya, I was like, oh, thank God. And I never thought that I would feel like that about Minya because I hated her. I really hated her. <laughs> but I was excited to see her again because so much stuff was happening that I was just like, please, stop. Wow. Fine. Y'all see me finishing this book, just look away. <laughs> I'll just the book, Monet. Okay. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, wow, you don't have to force me. I'll check it out again. Oh. Yeah, another book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but to answer my other question, because we're gonna um we're getting to the end. So I want to know like what your favorite tropes in fantasy are, and then also if you yeah, let's start with this one. What are your favorite tropes in fantasy? Okay, like, well, I don't really like romance focused books mm -hmm. i do like fantasy that has side romance so like they're mm -hmm. trying to save the world and stuff mm -hmm. but there's like some kisses on the side and some angst and some pine so mm -hmm. usually i like rivals or enemies to lovers because mm -hmm. there's that like slow build up together because like mm -hmm. even if you think about it laszlo and sarai are enemies mm -hmm. and then they become lovers 
Mm -hmm. So like, I think that's my shit. <laughs> it's my <thing. laughs> uh, I think I enjoy um, villainous characters. Mm -hmm. I need I need a I need a really good villain. Um, heist, I really enjoy. I love pretentious writing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love bougie, snobby writing, and I love when um, I love <laughs> tragedy, open ended tragedy, or like points of the book where like the author is not actually saying verbatim something, but she leaves the the reader to like kind of make their own connections or their own like alluding. I really love when the power lies with the reader. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of my favorite books will do that. Mm. But Monet said it better. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't hold my hand and walk me through the story. Like, just put me in a world and let me wonder. That's why we had issues with She Who Became the Sun. That was like... Guys, don't say that. Point. Don't say that because I'm reading that in December. <laughs> Who Became the Sun? I don't know if you ever did this, but like, you know when you get in trouble as a kid and they make you write, I will not disobey you like a hundred times front and back that's what she who became the sun felt like where it was like constantly yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> you won't be lost in that book i guarantee you will understand <laughs> um so reagan your turn i literally feel like i've never read a fantasy before right now um <laughs> I have no idea. I just like what I like. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, good characters that uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, while Reagan is not knowing, I will say my. <laughs> um, I recently realized that I really like tense family dynamics in fantasy. Like when I read Jade City, I was like, ooh, there's a lot of tension here. I love it. So I really love tense family dynamics. I also like um, when characters, <laughs> I like when the book has romance, but it's not the main focus, and then they don't end up together, which is really, really specific. But I love when they are not together at the end of the book, like whether it's because one character is no longer alive or if it's that they just had to pa like pathways because of something. Like I've realized lately that my favorite fantasy books are either like the ones that they didn't end up together or somebody died and they didn't end up together or it's like tense family dynamics. So I would say those right now are like my favorite. I, I think I agree. I think that's why I love Legend, the series by Marie Lu, uh, mm -hmm. because the ending of that one is like tragic and your love interest. Let me write that down, Legend. <laughs> yes, because it's so hard. Yeah, it's so hard. Like I feel like you won't like, like Legend. <laughs> oh, you feel like I won't like it? I just feel like you don't like anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> It's like old school sci-fi, like dystopia, like YA dystopia. I loved Legend. Legend it's been a while since I've read it though, mm. but I never finished. I never finished Champion. Yeah, I think for me, like it's really hard to tell what I'm gonna enjoy because most of the books that I like are like weird thrillers, weird contemporaries. So like with fantasy, I'm always like, will I enjoy this? And I never know until I start reading it and finish it. I'm like, wait, that was really good. So the only thing I had a feeling, actually that's like, cause I thought I would really not like Jade City. And then it's like now my favorite series. Well, we see when I read the third book, <laughs> but it's like my favorite. I love it so much. So yeah. I love when most of the characters die. Uh, <laughs> if, if characters don't die, I'm gonna be like, what is this? I'm gonna drop a rating. Yes. They're not dropping a rating. I won't say what book it is, but say it. My, one of my favorite series. Just tell the people they, so we can no, know. No, because it's a spoiler. Kind of, I guess. Oh, if it's kind of. This character gets killed. And then he comes back to life. I was like, what was that? Oh, what was the point? Yeah, I don't like the resurrection trope because I'm like, if you already died, why are you here? 
That's why I didn't like the Grishaverse books because uh, Miss Lee Bardugo. <laughs> she did it more than once. She did it more than yeah. once. And she's about to do it again. Mm -mm. Yeah, she is about to do it again. <laughs> she's about to do it again. No. She's giving like passions, days of our lives. If I like, see the darkening one more time, I'm going to fling myself off of something. Not that. Oh my God. I agree. Okay, any final thoughts that anyone in the comment section wants us to kind of discuss or go over or if you guys have any final thoughts or if you want to share anything about your content, your channel, whatever, channel, Monet, and then content, anybody else? <laughs> um, I have nothing going on in my life. You can find me on Instagram though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I upload every Monday. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I bulk filmed back in like June. I don't know <laughs> on my channel, but videos are going up, and we're all watching them together because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember. We're consistent too. <laughs> I don't remember. So. <laughs> uh, I might make videos again. <laughs> <laughs> My it's crazy uh, how like buying baby. books and reading them are not synonymous and reading them and reviewing them also not synonymous those are three different jobs three different hobbies buying books reading books and reviewing books yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> they certainly are <laughs> all right it looks like there are no final what dance recital <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. But oh, that is reminding me of instructions for dancing. Ugh, don't read that book, guys. Not that. Please, because when you talked about what happened in that book, I was like, this is unbelievable. You know what? Don't read The Other Black Girl. Don't read that either. That book is certainly a book. <laughs> it was written. <laughs> it was written. It was published. This is me right now. Exactly what Div said. Oof. That's me right now. Okay. Thank you to everyone who has joined us for this live show. It was definitely an interesting one. We had great conversations. <laughs> we had great conversations. Um, and I'm really glad that we had some really wonderful co-hosts here today. So thank you to everyone who came to co-host. If you guys want to check out any of their like, channel, bookstagram, whatever, all of those links are in the description as well as the book club instagram if you want to go and check out what we're reading for the rest of the year as well as the discord is also in the links down below don't forget we are reading ace of spades this month and then all's well next month and i'm really excited for both of those and yeah thank you so much for joining us see you in the next live show and goodbye bye guys